Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. The topic of our discussion today is episotomy and we will talk about its definition, the types, immediate and late complications and the procedure of episotomy. So how would you define episotomy? Episiotomy is an intentional surgical incision made in the perineum from vaginal orifice laterally with the aim of increasing soft tissue outlet dimensions to help with the childbirth. What are the immediate complications of episiotomy? Those include bleeding, pain, hematoma formation, extension of episiotomy, urinary retention, wound dehiscence, and necrotizing fasciitis. The late complications of episiotomy include breakdown of episiotomy, infection, dyspareunia, botulin gland damage, scarring, vesicovaginal fistula, and rectovaginal fistula, and scar endometriosis. The types of Episiotomy include first of all mediolateral episiotomy which is a cut from vagina at an angle of to one side of the anus and the midline episiotomy is a cut from vagina directly toward the anus. The indications of episiotomy include first of all thick and inelastic perineum, secondly the fetal distress, thirdly the shoulder dystocia, instrumental vaginal delivery, fetal malpositioning, previous pelvic floor surgery. Now we will talk about the procedure of episiotomy. I will explain the whole procedure to the couple, inform them of its needs and risks and will take an informed consent after gowning and gloving and in the presence of adequate light and anesthesia which may be local infiltration or regional anesthesia. I will check for the pain perception and clean the area with the antiseptic solution. Then I will insert the two fingers of one hand behind the fore sheet and commence an incision at the midpoint of the fore sheet using straight scissor at 30 to 45 degree laterally, adjusting the length according to the indication or clinical judgment at the time of the crowning. The bleeding will be controlled by the pressure of the presenting part during contraction and between the contractions. I will apply pressure by rectal pad to minimize the oozing. Following delivery of the baby, I will check the pain for the pain perception. If there are additional tears that require suturing, I will give additional local infiltration. In the presence of adequate light and exposure in the third new position, I will first place an episiotomy ball of sterile gauze in the vagina before commencing repair to aid visualizing by avoiding soiling of the wound. Monofilament synthetic absorbable suturing material is recommended. I will place the first suture well above the apex to ensure hemostasis and then I will approximate the vaginal wall with the sutures placed at interval of 0.5 to 1 cm with a continuous pattern using vicral repeat. I will keep the distance between the sutures on the medial wall shorter than that on the lateral wall in order to bring good approximation of the fore sheet where I will lock the suture again. If there is minimal bleeding from the perineal wound, I will approximate muscle by the continuous otherwise interrupted sutures. I will approximate skin by the mattress or interrupted sutures. At the end of the procedure, I will do complete in examination to look for any genital trauma and repair it if present. I will do the rectal examination to rule out accidental involvement of the rectal mucosa or anal canal in the suture. If the sutures are present in the rectum, they must be removed and replaced. Then I will remove the episiotomy ball and count my needles and swabs. Then I will reposition my patient, give her a sterile pad, cover her up and shift her to the recovery room to keep her under observation for at least 1-2 to two hours. After that, I will write the detailed notes with the date, time and my signature. Once the patient is completely stable and we make a plan to send her home, then at that time I will give her appropriate advice regarding the wound care and analgesia. The first advice would be regarding the sits bath. I will tell her to make use of the sits bath at least twice daily. For pain relief, an analgesic such as ibuprofen is recommended. If woman has excessive pain in the days after episiotomy repair, she should be examined immediately because pain is frequent sign of infection in the perineal area. So we will tell the patient that if she notice any of the complications which we discussed before, she should immediately inform her, her healthcare provider. So thank you so much. That was all about episiotomy repair. Subscribe on Ops and Gyne. Allah Hafiz.